Hey folks, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. So this hobby has a lot of facets. There's so many ways to enjoy it. And I think a lot of us dip our toes into many of them. Personally, I really like it all. I love building miniature things from scratch. I get a ton of satisfaction building practical things for games, but I also get a ton of joy from building things simply for display. I like making things from scratch. I like building kits. I've even come to really enjoy just painting, be it something I have made, something I've printed, or something I've bought. And speaking of printing, I, I really like 3D printing as a part of this hobby too. There's just so many unique sculptors out there making great things for us to use. I really don't think that this hobby, at least for me, would be sustainable if I were to focus on just one of these things. Personally, I don't understand how some people can only paint minis, or only scratch build stuff, or only 3D print stuff, or only whatever one thing they might be doing. Now, there's no judgment to the people that do that, of course. It's just that for me and my personal enjoyment, uh, I can't imagine just doing one thing. I just know that I wouldn't be able to get a long lasting enjoyment out of a hobby if I were just to, you know, focus on one specific part of it. And this means that I jump around a lot. I go through little phases where I, you know, I want to do a bunch of one thing and then, you know, go on to the next. It might be for a while I'm really into painting or 3D printing or scratch building or mixed media building or making cheap things out of household objects or working with garbage. It's all good and it all scratches different hobby itches. One corner, for example, of this hobby that I was really reluctant to get into for a long time was 3D printing. And holding myself back from doing that, uh, I was doing a great disservice to my creative process. And my hobby life is a lot better now that I've embraced that particular part of the hobby. Now, another process that I for a long time barely touched was kit bashing. You know, taking a model, cutting it up and making it unique, smashing different models together or just making something original out of a bunch of parts and pieces from many different things. A lot of this reluctance had to do with the nature of how my hobby has manifested, which is in this channel. I've always tried to make these videos as useful as possible to as many people as possible, which means that, you know, building something out of the parts that I happen to personally have on hand isn't really great for someone wanting to replicate what I'm doing. But over the past, I don't know, two years or so, I've let myself really kind of get away from this mentality. I've done a lot more projects where, you know, they're not directly replicable. They're just an idea. And I think that that's a good thing. In, in my mind, general inspiration is just as meaningful and powerful, if not more so than pure instruction. So many of you yourself have been crafting and making for years now. And many of you who may have even started because of my channel have now probably outpaced me in skill and ability. But I think what keeps a lot of people coming back, you know, to this channel is that simple sharing of a hobby, a passion and inspiration. I just embrace this realization that for me, uh, using found objects and pieces and parts sculpted by others doesn't mean a lack of creativity. In fact, it tends to open up the door to a lot more creativity and kind of just like bust that door wide open. And also a lot of my favorite artists inside and outside of the modeling world tend to work in this kind of mixed media found object fashion. Fashion. Embracing mixed media and kit bashing has, you know, led me down that path of creating this whole new world, but it's also allowed me to enjoy, you know, games and models by Games Workshop, for example, that, you know, I didn't really like that much in the past. When I kit bash, I kind of mentally escape life stresses even more so than when, say, I'm just scratch building. I just kind of let the pieces I'm looking at guide me in this really zen-like way. When I build from scratch, I'm pretty free form and it, it is a great escape, but there's always some level of planning and thinking and problem solving that can kind of mentally take you out of that just creative raw moment and put you back into this mindset that might be tainted by life's stresses and worries. So for some reason that I don't fully comprehend and certainly can't explain well, kit bashing specifically keeps me the most focused on the process without these sort of stress creeping in. It's the most therapeutic form of crafting for me out of all of the corners of this hobby. And it's really nice knowing that. 
Hey, if you're watching my videos, there's a good chance that you're interested in learning new skills and trying your hand at different artistic ventures. Now, while channels like mine are a great place to do that, Skillshare offers a much more structured and ad-free environment with classes led by experts to help you grow whatever hobby or creative venture you're passionate about. There's a lot of subjects being taught there that are totally applicable to miniature hobbyists and even people world building and storytelling through tabletop RPGs. There's a bunch of classes on things like painting, drawing, design, writing, photography, video editing, you name it. Lincoln Michaels, for example, has a class called Science Fiction and Fantasy Creating Unique and Powerful Worlds, and it's a perfect example of a class that could be applied to those of us creating unique worlds for friends and families to game in. At less than 10 bucks a month with an annual subscription, it's a great investment for creative people looking to refine their art. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership. So you can explore your creativity. Even if you've already had a free trial of Skillshare in the past, you can still take advantage of this offer to get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. While seeing something you make from scratch start to take shape and you know look uniform once you put the primer on it and come to life with paint is absolutely one of the most satisfying moments you can have in this hobby as a maker. There's something a little bit different and something a little bit special about priming and painting something that you've kind of Frankenstein together out of other people's parts that you know, I don't know, it's special in its own unique way. I'm reminded of my days uh, as a musician, you know, writing and producing music. Of course, the songs and albums that I composed and released myself are to this day some of the things that I'm most proud of in my life. But I also did countless remixes for other bands. And these remixes also hold a very special place in my heart. They were satisfying to do in a different way. You know, it's one thing to find your own style or voice in any given art form, but it's entirely different to, you know, refine that style to a point where you can take someone else's work and put your own hand on it to create something new with parts from others that is entirely still your own thing and recognizable as yours. Having your style be so well established and you know kind of defined that it shines through even on something like a remix is a very powerful and important thing to strive towards in any art form. And kit bashing is no different. I think that in this hobby of miniatures, tabletop, you know, dioramas, whatever, this is also totally true. I find myself working more and more in this kind of direction. But the longer I do this, the more I kind of want to work towards creating pieces, be they for gaming or display or just art, whatever, that are clearly uniquely mine making pieces that someone might just recognize as definitely being made by Black Magic Craft if they just saw a picture. You know, pieces that someone could be incredibly inspired by that could lead them to make their own thing, but not that they would necessarily try to replicate verbatim. Of course, trying to make things that help others, uh, things that can be done step by step by anyone is really important to me. And it, and it always will be. It's always going to be a part of this channel and part of my brand. But personally, my personal artistic goals right now are to kind of just create things that are just plainly inspirational to my audience. And I think that's a really important and healthy thing for both personal growth, for channel growth, and just for this hobby space in general. So this week, you know, I've just been making this weird plague rat beast thing to go in my Death Guard army. I don't even know exactly what it's gonna be, but it's just something I wanted to build. I had this rat model in my mind since the last video I did for Archvillain. I just, I couldn't shake it. I was like, I really love this model. I wanna do something with it. So I printed it out and you know, I just wanted to smash Death Guard pieces on it to make it something cool for my army. Now, I don't think many of you will go out and try to replicate this exact build, but all of feel free to if you want to, but I hope that just watching me make it, maybe seeing how some of the parts went together or how it was modified or painted or whatever gives you a little spark of inspiration. Maybe it makes you think of something different and hopefully it makes you grab some bits and start building something for yourself. If you don't have a wealth of bits of, you know, various parts from different models, that's okay. I think that's one of the trickiest parts about kit bashing. You know, personally, for a long time, I didn't have that big collection either. 
My collection was slowly built up over time, and for years I just played around with whatever stuff I could find in the trash or at a thrift store or a dollar store. But as you hobby, you save your leftovers, especially ones from model kits. Be on the lookout for cheap lots of models and minis that might be broken, partially assembled, or badly painted. Look, you know, on Marketplace for people getting out of a hobby. When you start looking at items with hacking them up in mind, it really allows you to look at things, you know, a lot differently than if it's just things that you wanted to have or paint. You know, you can check the Goodwill, check garage sales, check Facebook classified, eBay, your local game shop or whatever for bulk bits and, you know, broken models, things you might normally pass over. And you know, if you have a more typical local hobby shop, you know, the kind that sells military models or train stuff, go check those out. You know, maybe you can find some cool discount World War II army tank that those hobbyists in, in that corner of the hobbyists no longer want and it's on deep discount and you can just cut it up and turn it into some kind of unique proxy model for a war game or a weird mechanical terror for your D&D game or maybe a spacecraft for some sort of sci-fi adventure. You know, don't get too attached to your bits and what they're supposed to be. Let yourself realize that their real true value is sometimes higher, hacked up and destroyed and turned into something usable than if it's just sitting on a shelf collecting dust, waiting for you to put it together the quote unquote right way. Don't feel you need to save things to do them the way they're intended. Just cut them up if you want it. And if it actually turns into something usable, that's awesome. You know, I said during my torment build that suddenly nothing was sacred. And that was the biggest and best and by far most important hobby mindset change that I have possibly ever made. My collection, my hobbying, everything has taken on a kind of new perspective since this change in how I view stuff that I'd been saving. Nowadays, no matter how I'm feeling or how inspired I may or may not be, I can always just walk into my shop, grab a box of bits and some random models and just let pieces kind of lead me down a creative path. There's no better way to end a creative block or get out of a bit of a slump than to just do this. Just build freeform and let the pieces guide you. And, and before you know it, you may have sparked some huge new idea way beyond that one little piece you're making. And that idea could end up being the major part of your hobby life for weeks or months or more. It could plant this little seed of an idea that blossoms into a whole new unique and original world. Friends, I hope you find this joy yourself in some way, no matter what form of creativity uh, it comes in. I just really want you to try exploring and to enjoy your journey doing so. And if you've never kit bashed a model, I, I think it's time to start. I hope you enjoyed this, you know, slightly different kind of video. If you did hit the like button and drop me a comment below. If you want to help support the channel, you can easily do that by doing your regular hobby shopping through my essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca, where you can buy the stuff you'd be buying anyway at no extra cost to you. And of course, if you really enjoy these videos and this channel and all the kind of work that I do and you want to help me do it, uh, the best way you can support the channel is by joining up on Patreon. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. I love you all. I'll see you next week. Cheers.